For some reason, the whole first half of this episode is lost, so now I'll have to explain to you guys what happened. Because life hates me. This episode started off at the beginning of a new chapter, called The Lost Harp. Can't guess what this chapter is going to be about. And it starts off with a flashback from when Tae tried to get a job at Banjul. Then us, the beautiful protagonist, wakes up and Tae makes us go to school with Lance, who, well, kind of agrees. Then when class is about to start, someone announced over the school speakers that I was called to the infirmary. What does the bone-loving lunatic want with me now? What happens is he's trying to take our clothes off. Okay, just kidding, it was just a sock, and he checks on our hurt ankle, and it's very school nurse-like, which is weirdly attractive, by the way. The reason why he's doing this is because both Yuri, Red, and Tay came to him trying to convince him to do it. Yuri was all like, oh, my honey needs help, while Red was like, I have to protect the heroine, and now he's about to explain what happened with Tay. By the way, hey guys, this is Arm Productions, aka Nana 4623, and I'm back in Nameless Part 25. This was a pain in the e neck. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm back. I'm sorry, I had to do something. Um, anyways, I was thinking the infirmary was too bothered today when that brunette came in last. Yes, he was the most stubborn. Mr. Eugene must have been very startled. He read a lot, uh, on unlike his usual self. What did Tay say? Don't ask questions, please. He's gonna be mad. Come on. Never mind, you don't need to know. Tell me I'm involved in this, please. Please? I held on to Mr. Eugene close and asked, You're... brave. Oh, I don't know why, but I suddenly get this really want to have a room with Mr. Eugene. He's so weird, and I'm strangely attracted to that. Um, according to my observation, observations, Mr. Eugene hates when people do this, so he'll tell me if I keep on holding on to his clothes. Sure enough, Mr. Eugene cringed and talked, started talking. Let go, I hate it when girls cling on to me. It's annoying. Then tell me, I won't annoy you then, or else I'm going to cling on to you like this. The address is watching, let go. Tell me! I shouldn't have mentioned it in the first place. Right, fine, let go, I'll tell you. I let go at the end of his clothes. Mission accomplished. Mr. Eugene dusted up the sleeve I held on to. You and them, everyone here, is, uh, everyone here to annoy me today. He gave up glaring at me and started talking. Well, he's, he never said it was a secret, so I guess I can tell you. Brunette offered me a deal. A deal? Yes, he told me if his perfect bones would become a specimen for my next experiment if I kept checking on your angle. I said yes, uh, since I needed a sample from a healthy male anyways, but he tricked me. Only losses for me, but I guess it was going to be this, uh, it was going to be this annoying, uh, if I knew it was going to be this annoying, I would have said no right away. I regret it. What? Tay said himself he'd be your next sample? Jesus. Did you even listen to what I used to say? He tricked me. There won't be any experiment with that one yet. What do you mean trick him? How can he trick you with his bones? You really were all clueless about that boy. What? Mr. Eugene looked at me reproachfully. I'm glad Tay avoided becoming a specimen. But there must be more to the story. Sadly, I don't think Mr. Eugene has any intention to reveal that part to me. Never mind, I heard you fell because you were pushed, idiot. So, did you find the person who pushed you? No? Hm, I knew. I knew being a fool was useless. Mr. Eugene obviously think I'm pathetic. And then, he held up his long finger and wiped it. In this life, there are only two ways of living, being superior and inferior. S or give and take. It doesn't matter whether you hideous leg bone breaks or not, but if you've been attacked, you have to know how to counterattack. What do you mean attack? I just fell because there were too many people. The transfer student didn't seem to think so. What? Reasons must be over. Hurry and leave. I need to spend time with Beatrice now. I can't get this guy. I don't get this guy. What? I I'm not done talking. Be quiet, I've nothing else to say. Leave now. Mr. Eugene! Mr. Eugene pushed me out of the door and I was banished to the hall just like that. I struggled and tried to open the door again, but I never did. I felt complicated and iffy. There were still things I wanted to ask. But since the bell rang, I have to go, so I'm not late for class. I barely lifted my heavy feet and headed to the classroom. Anyway, I didn't know... I didn't know. Yuri and Red and Tay are worried about me that much. 
I imagined the three of them taking turns annoying Mr. Eugene. I couldn't help but laugh at that thought. Besides, Tay even said he'd give up his body. I was very surprised. He told me we should keep our distance at the academy. I pouted but couldn't help my eyes from smiling. smiling. I should definitely thank him later. Hi, Sion. We're he here? Sion? We didn't see Sion who always greeted us. I glanced around to look for him, but I didn't see him anywhere. Hmm? Did something happen? He was standing there at the entrance like when someone else walked towards us from the corner. Oh, you guys are here. Oh, uh, huh? Oh, Tay! Hello! I was waiting for Sion since I naturally thought he'd come, but Tay came up. So I was st stiff like a stick. Her cheerful voice broke out because she was so nervous. Her cheeks turned pink and that instant she didn't keep her eyes away from him for a second. This never fails to amaze me. Usually she's so vi wild, wild, <laughs> like a fierce hunter. But whenever she's around Tay, she always becomes this shy girl. Amazing. Since Soy stood frozen at the spot, I had to be the one to ask about Sion. Hey, Tay, but you're here, uh... Are you by yourself today? At my question, Tay looked like he just remembered something. Oh, you guys are standing here because Sion isn't here. He's over there. Tay pointed at a dark corner beside the counter. At the corner, Sion was crouched. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. I'm sorry, someone came to see me again. He was crouched down with his knees gathered together. Oh, shit. It was covered in the shadow, so we didn't notice it before. When Sora saw that, she came back to her senses and approached him. Oh my god, Sion, what are you doing here? Are you sick? Oh, uh, hello. Who came? Sora said hi with a weak voice. I could tell something was going on with him. Let's get that music right down. What's wrong, Sion? Um, did something happen to him? Sion looked like he was witnessing the world coming to an end. What happened in the last couple of days? Soy and I looked at Tay confused. Oh, that. Tay looked uncomfortable but soon ex Excuse me? Alright, um, a few moments later. What? The harp's missing! Shh, your voice is too loud. Tay put a finger on his mouth and, mouth and whispered. At that, so I got excited again and started huffing and puffing. Then, aren't you in big trouble? What about Mr. Hoban? What did he say? Mr. Hoban's on a business trip right now. He found some excellent tea leaves and went to get them. He'll be back tomorrow. Tay glanced at the empty counter. Sion was still crouched down, looking like he was about to cry. Oh, then this is more serious since he's not here. Didn't he say his grandfather passed it down to him? Yeah, that's why we're in more trouble and we have no idea what happened. The heart isn't something anyone can just carry and sneak out. It would have to be someone who knows Ben Jewel and the Harp work very well. Then isn't Sion the only one? That's one right, Sion even has the key, so things really look bad right now. Sion might have had to take responsibility for the Harp if we can't find out who took it. Tay looked troubled and frowned. Sion, who was trembling in the corner, turned pale at hearing our conversation. I feel so bad for him. That's unfair. He must be the saddest one to have the harp stolen. How can he be responsible for that? Yeah, I think so too, but the situation is complicated, since harp, the harp isn't cheap. As I stood up for Sion, Tay agreed. But I didn't feel better at all. To be honest, I don't know that much about Sion and ben -Jul. I don't really remember how the harp looks like, except that it's right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Um... Uh, like, and I've never even seen Sion play it. But the reason I'm so worried is because Tay works here. When Tay uh, told me he'd be working here, I couldn't help but worry. When I actually saw Benjul and the people working here, I stopped worrying. I felt so happy to know Tay was working at such a good place with good people. Couldn't you just worry about Sion? I don't know you don't know him that much, but... Worry about him? He's so sad? So Benjul became oh okay there, there we go. So Benjul became important to me too, but something bad's happened now. Sorry, looked, looked worried. Isn't there any way? Maybe we can borrow a harp before Mister Hoban comes and switch it for a while. A harp's not easy, not easy to find. Besides, a harp is antique and it'll be difficult to find the same model. 
and to find the answer to Mario would be impossible. Every time Tay crossed out possible options, we grew more and more disheartened. So I clutched your head. Ah, oh, this is such a disaster. I can't just stay here. Wait a moment, I'll go see if anyone knows how to get a heart. So I looked at Paul Sion one more time and left the cafe with her phone. Aw, oh, she's so cute. I whispered to Tay after Zoe left. Will Sion, will Sion be okay? I don't know. It's sad to lose something precious, isn't that like the obvious? That should have been more careful is not good enough, I think. I don't know. I've decided. We'll do this. He cherished that harp so much. He must be so sad right now. I hope we find it soon. I remembered how Sion smiled like the happiest person on earth when he talked about the heart. He said he started working here because of it. I felt that as I felt bad for Sion, Tay stared at me. Huh? Um, you seem to be sure that Sion didn't take it. Of course! He'd never have stolen it. How can you be so sure? Look at his face! That face is necking right now. That face? Tay looked confused. Yeah, that face. I've seen it before. When? At Grandpa's funeral. Tay looked like he wanted to hear more. That's how I looked when I saw myself in the mirror. I said it, but it still made me sad. Tay was lost for words for a moment. Yes, that day, I looked like Sion. He looked frustrated, devastated, and lost. As if he'd lost something he thought would be by his side forever. I've been there before, so I can't possibly suspect Sion. Of course, the situation is a bit different, but I think that he's, I think he's that devastated. He looks so sad. He would have never taken it. Okay, I get it. Tay listened silently to, what I had, silently to what I had to say and nodded. He even gave me a smile. Yeah, I hope we find it soon. I kept worrying about Tay, Sian. I tried to think about what I could do, but nothing came to mind. I think it's not because you went through the similar situation that you don't suspect Xi'an. What? Tay gave me a kind smile. It's because you have a good and innocent heart and you, you can trust people. Oh. My face turned red at the sudden compliment. I did feel embarrassed, but Sion still bothered me. But regardless, Tay continued on. Mama, you're a good person. Stay that way. I know there are people who can cheer up to see you like that. He was so serious, I ended up nodding. But even though Tay smiled pleasingly, I couldn't understand why he was suddenly saying that to me. I kept worrying about Sion in the heart. I was startled from the sound of the door opening and hurriedly backed away from Tay. Sure enough, it was Sawyer who came in. I could see her from her frowning, frowning face that things didn't go so well. Of course, there's no one for heart. We all sighed at what she said. I'm back. Oh, you're here. Tay came in pretty late today, so I stayed awake to see him. Yeah, where's everyone else? They're sleeping. What happened with the harp? I asked about the harp as soon as I saw him. But he looked gloomy and shook his face. His head. He shook his face. <laughs> My shoulders dropped. Okay. I guess it's gone. It just completely disappeared. There aren't any signs of the break him. I don't even know if someone actually stole it. Tay so looked at his empty hands and said, Mr. Hobbins said the harp was passed down to him, right? I don't know how Sian will be able to handle this. I'm worried too. <sighs> I couldn't help but sigh at thinking of Sian. I've only met him a couple of times, but I guess I grew to like him since he was always so nice. Tay shrugged his shoulders. Cheer up, Alice will, will think you own the harp. Tay tried to cheer me up with a light-hearted attitude. Don't worry so much, I was preparing to explain everything to Mr. Hoban anyways. Now it's too late, he should go to bed. As I looked down, as I stood still looking dejected, Tay let out a sigh. Come on, why are you doing that? Stop just blinking, I want to see what you're saying. It's, it's passing up. Did you stay awake because you were worried? You still have to take care of yourself, you look awful. I feel like Tay's going to start nagging me soon. Sure enough, he continued talking like my mom. Sian is still a stranger to you. Don't worry about other people and go to bed. Miss Tay. 
I feel bad about the harp gone missing, but it'll worry more if you don't get enough rest. But I can't help myself. Don't worry too much and go to bed. Just leave the rest to me. Okay? Toad so finally smiled after I forced out an answer. Toad so laid down his coat and the back of the sofa and headed to the bathroom. I watched him as he went. I guess Toad's the only one more worried and busy right now. He knew his yarn longer than I did. But I feel, feel like I forgot that earlier for some reason and napped him too much. I feel bad. Besides, he must be tired from working late. I went to the sofa and gathered his things. I should take these to his room. I was about to grab his big jacket. Huh? Is this a key? Picked up and the key that fell to the ground. I held it up and saw a keychain with Ben Jewel's logo on it. I widened my eyes. Then this is the key to Ben Jewel. I remembered Sion looking like he wanted to cry. A person who lost something, some, lost an impression. I know that feeling so well. Grandpa. How would Sion feel right now? Oh goodness. We're gonna sneak out. <laughs> See you in the next episode.